How's it going guys? Today I got a video for you going over uh, how I organize my tackle and uh, how I store my tackle. So if you guys haven't seen my channel before then you, you probably don't know that I pretty much exclusively fish from a kayak. So the other thing is that I travel uh, quite frequently. Uh, I basically live out of my truck. Everything that you know I move with has to fit in my truck. Uh, and that includes my fishing stuff. So I'm not too fond of taking, you know, tons of stuff with me uh, where I go. Actually, this past summer, I probably sold half of my tackle, uh, stuff that I just, I knew I wouldn't use anymore. Uh, and it was a good feeling. It was good to get rid of all that stuff and have less clutter, have less stuff to worry about, because it was basically just adding weight to my truck. You know, kayak fishing is different from bass boat fishing for a lot of reasons, but uh, one of the big things uh, that separates the two is the tackle and uh, rod storage. So in a bass boat, you know, you have the luxury of your rod lockers, you've got tons of compartments for your, your baits and your boxes. In a kayak, that's really not the case. So efficiency is definitely a big factor in kayak fishing uh, when storing your tackle. So I've been kayak fishing for about four or five years now, and you know, I've, I think I've pretty much evolved to this system I have today. Uh, I think it's pretty efficient. That's one of my big things when I'm on the water is being efficient, um, not looking for things. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a minimalist, but I definitely don't like having tons and tons of gear, uh, as you'll probably see today. Um, so yesterday, I actually spent like five hours going through all of last year's uh, tackle, you know, over a course of a fishing season, you'll, you'll go through bags of plastics, you'll use half of them, you'll throw them back in the tray. Uh, things just get cluttered and you know yesterday was pretty much just sifting through everything that I'm not going to need for the 2017 season uh, and it was time consuming but I'm pretty happy with what I was able to do I pretty much condensed all of my tackle that I'm going to be using for 2017 uh, minus you know the things that I'll purchase in 2017 right here so this is essentially everything I will travel with tackle wise uh, on this table and if you take a look right here that is everything I've kind of weeded through. I'm not throwing that stuff out, but that's just the stuff I'm not gonna need uh, at this point. So let's get into how I store my soft plastics first. So as far as, well, all my tackle storage, it pretty much is in this Yak Attack black pack. This is what goes with me on the kayak. This is my tackle box for the kayak. Uh, everything that I'll need for that day pretty much fits in here. I've got 3,600 boxes in here and I've got soft plastics in here. Um, my terminal tackle, that's an, a different story. I'll go over that at the end. So this is pretty much what my black pack typically looks like. Um, I've got my 3600 boxes here and I've got my plastics here. So as far as plastics go, I use these Ziploc bags to organize my plastics. I'll typically have three or four in the black pack at any time and I pretty much organize them by category. For example, this bag right here is all trailers. So I've got my Swim Senko trailers in here. Um, you know, I've got jig trailers in here as well. Uh, you know, all my trailers are in this little Ziploc baggie and I know where they are. They're easy to get. Uh, just, you know, pull one out and it's there. Uh, this next bag we have here, worms. We've got Senkos. We've got Senkos. Uh, we've got drop shot baits. Any worm type bait will go in this bag. And I've got a flipping bag. So this is, you know, it's got the Rage Menace. You obviously know that's one of my favorite baits. Uh, I'm pretty excited to try this new bait, the Jackal Archelon. Should be a pretty nice flipping bait. Um, got some Ugly Otters in here. But again, just another Ziploc bag that I have as kind of a broad category for a certain type of bait. I know a lot of guys use the Plano boxes to store their soft plastics. Personally, I used to do that and I, I kind of think it's a waste of space and time. You know, I'd have a whole box of Senkos, you know, I'd organize them by color. And uh, I, you know, I think even for the purpose of storage of soft plastics, I think it's just a lot more efficient and better for your baits. Just keep them in their original packaging. This is the black pack that I bring on the kayak with me, it sits right behind me. I can reach it super easy. Uh, and that's as far as soft plastics, that's how I keep them in the black pack and organize them. If I know I need a, uh, a Senko, if I need a pink Senko, I reach behind me, I got my Senko bag, it's right there. Now as far as, you know, traveling and, you know, additional storage, I use these big uh, Tupperware bins, I think you can get them at Walmart, Target, pretty much anywhere. Um, this is how I keep my extra soft plastics. So these are, I think, pretty organized. 
I don't have them labeled just because I can look overhead and see exactly what they are. Uh, but for this bin, I've got pretty much all my drop shot baits. You guys know I'm a big fan of the Zoom Z drops. I do have a couple of these poor boys baits, uh, drop shot worms. Got some KVD dream shots. And then of course, you know, a stash of robo worms. And we got some shad shape worms by Gary Yamamoto. But again, all my additional drop shot baits. And you know, another important thing to mention is this keeps me super organized when, you know, if I have a good day out on the water and I get on a really good drop shot bite, then I'll just go to my little drop shot bag, go to my little worm bag and restock it. Simple as that, quick and easy. Uh, this middle column here, we've got uh, some trailers specifically for chatter baits. So for me in the past, huge fan of the Gary Yamamoto Swim Senkos. I've got mainly black and blue and green pumpkin. I've got a couple of the pearl color. Uh, if you watch my recent unboxing video, I picked up a bunch of the new uh, Zacco uh, trailers for the chatterbait. Really excited about these. So I've got these stored away in here. And then up top here, pretty sure the only bed fishing bait I'll be using for 2017 will be the Warmouth. I haven't found a better bed fishing bait than the Warmouth. I've got plenty of packs of those. And then on this side, I just have some Gambler Ugly Otters. We've got some brush hogs here. We got some game hogs by Strike King. Um, a couple miscellaneous baits. Uh, we've got some Zoom Z hogs, some Jean LaRue uh, biffle bugs, uh, some flapping hogs by Gary Yamamoto, and then some more Archelons. You could probably call this the Rage Box. I've got all of my Rage Menaces here. Uh, pretty much most are black and blue. Uh, I've got some Blue Craw. Um, and again, this is what I kind of did yesterday is I, I told you I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of packs like that. I took every one of them and condensed them into one pack and threw out the extras. So that was time consuming, but again, you know, it makes you more efficient, uh, allows for more storage. Uh, here we've got all of my, uh, Rage Craws. You know, we've got these, uh, for jig trailers or I use them for jig trailers. We've got some Strike King rodents. I'm a fan of the Strike King rodents for flipping as well, especially in the pre-spawn. We've got some Rage Tail Recon Worms. And then over here, I've got some Senkos. Got some Gary Yamamoto Senkos. I've got a couple Yum Dingers. And then some uh, Grande Bass Rattlesnakes. I'm not a huge, you know, Senko. I mean, I mean, I love Senkos, but I don't throw them a ton. So obviously I don't think I need too many in 2017. If I do, then, you know, I'll just buy some more, but that's not my initial thought. That's how I store all my soft plastics. These two bins right here, I think will cover everything that I need and will get me through a good part of the year. You know, if I run out of, cer of a certain bait, I'll just go to the storage bins and restock. So uh, pretty happy with how I store my soft plastics. And again, this is at least the way that I found to be more efficient on the water. Um, you know, they're easy to get, uh, they're easy to restock and I know what I have. So that's how I store and uh, utilize my soft plastics on the water. So as far as hard bait storage, I use 3600 size uh, Plano boxes. I prefer the 3600 size just because I can fit a few more in the black pack versus the 3700. And I don't really think you need, you know, a 3700 to store hard baits for a specific category. I'm not gonna bring, you know, I'm not gonna need 25 crankbaits with me in a day. Uh, so I think the 3600s are a perfect size for, for the black pack and just in general for kayak fishermen. I've got five 3600 boxes in here right now. I've got them labeled. I don't really need the labels because I can pretty much just see what's in there. Um, but for example, I've got you know my swim baits right here. I've got a swim bait box. I've got all my swim bait gear in there. Um, Huddlestons. I've got some of these Bastrix paddle tail swim baits, uh, some hooks. Here's my top water box. So top water. Of course, you got your frogs. You've got uh, some wobber ploppers, BK's grass burner, and then some spooks. Now this is the one box that I did need to label. Uh, I, you know, and maybe I didn't need to label, but there is a few different uh, categories as far as this box goes. This is my jig and chatterbait. Uh, box. So I keep swim jigs in here, hack attack jigs. I've got chatter baits and then I've got some uh, some structure jigs or some just different kind of jigs. I don't organize them by color. I organize them by size. But taking a look, you know, we, like I said, we've got swim jigs up here, half ounce swim jigs. Um, now, actually, this is a hack attack half ounce and up. So there are a few bigger 
hack attack jigs in here like this is a big one ounce half hack attack jig so that's in there but uh, i can pretty much tell the difference between a half ounce and anything bigger and then the three three eighths ounce uh, jigs are over here i think you know that's i separate them that way because three eighths ounce and half ounce are sometimes harder to distinguish between again half ounce chatter baits uh, these are all Z-Man custom chatterbaits, 3 8 ounce chatterbaits. And these are kind of my structure jigs or just uh, miscellaneous jigs. We've got some Denny Brower jigs in here. Um, you know, I plan on using these Denny Brower jigs for flip or uh, for skipping docks. They've kind of got a flatter head on them, so they're a little bit easier to skip uh, under docks. And that's uh, kind of a situational jig for me. Probably the most labeled box that I have. And we've got uh, crankbaits. So crankbaits, pretty simple. I keep my deeper divers up top, my medium divers in the middle, and then my shallow divers on the bottom. So, you know, KVD 1.5s, uh, Spro Little Johns, and then we got some uh, Spro Baby DDs. Um, they go about 10 to 12 feet. I don't really fish any deeper than that, so I don't really need anything deeper in the box. My last box, uh, jerk baits, rattle traps, and inline spinners. And that's pretty much what's in the box, just what I said. So kind of, you know, miscellaneous, some, some baits that I don't traditionally throw a lot, but I still have them available and they just kind of go in that box. Now, as far as, you know, additional storage goes for my hard baits, uh, keep them in this crate here. Um, this is kind of a, a unique box. It's my A-Rig box. Uh, if I, I don't throw A-Rigs a lot, I may this year, and that's the reason I have it with me, but if I do decide to throw the A-Rigs, I'll probably just throw this in the kayak, maybe in the front hatch, just because it has all the equipment. Now, these are my 3,700 boxes. I like the 3,700 boxes for the additional storage, um, but these are pretty much baits that are all in the black pack that I may need to restock at some point. Uh, got plenty of frogs, of course. Love throwing the frogs. We've got some top water, uh, more traps. Haven't thrown this bait yet. Uh, looking forward to throwing this when, uh, you know, water gets a little warmer. This is the Savage Gear Duckling. Really cool looking bait. Uh, I don't know. I think that, that, could, be, uh, that could be real interesting. Uh, some more inline spinners. You know, we've got, uh, here's all my extra crankbaits. So, you know, if I run out of a certain crankbait, certain color, I've got backups. And then I've got deeper diving cranks. Like I said, I don't throw really deep diving cranks, but they're there just in case. You never know. Uh, more square bills, more, I got some DT6s here, some more Spro Little Johns. Uh, pretty much has me covered crankbait wise. And then the other 3700 box, uh, just extra jigs. Got my extra swim jigs, extra hack attack jigs, structure jigs. Uh, and some chatterbaits. Got some extra chatterbaits in there. You know, this box right here, I keep extra terminal tackle in here, some extra reels when I'm traveling. Usually re all my reels will go in here, typically, but uh, this is kind of some miscellaneous stuff that I couldn't fit anywhere else, and I can't, I can't, I'm going to keep it in here. But the last box I want to go over uh, with you guys is my terminal tackle box. And, uh, you know, I've actually... I've kind of gone back and forth between sizes and different boxes as far as terminal tackle goes. And, uh, you know, I haven't really found a really good organized way to keep terminal tackle. Um, and after doing a lot of re research um, and just thinking about it, I've decided to go with the Bass Mafia Terminal Coffin. Um, you know, terminal tackle, I think, is super underrated. You know, your terminal tackle is essentially the most important part of your, uh, your presentation. Uh, and it can make the difference in getting a bite and not getting a bite. So I really wanted to invest in a good terminal tackle box. It will keep me organized and allow me to you know, carry as much as I could. As far as terminal tackle storage, this box will go with me on the kayak. I'm gonna put it right under my seat. As far as this box, if you open it up, they've come out with a really unique way of storing your terminal tackle, specifically with these terminal coffins. You've got your hooks, and you've got your weights, and especially for the tungsten weights, this is, uh, you know, this is going to be a game changer because typically for tungsten weights, I would just throw them in a little compartment like that, and they would stack up, and you know, over time they they chip, you know, they bang up against each other and they chip. With these terminal coffins, you have them separated. They can't chip. They can bang around as much as they want, and you're going to hold the paint. So, uh, really excited about this new way and storage of um, terminal tackle as far as tungsten. And again, for these little terminal coffins, you, all you have to do is take this little sliding plastic, 
slide it out. I need a half ounce tungsten weight in green pumpkin with blue flake. It's right there. Really cool way of storing your tungsten weights. Uh, and what's nice about these little terminal coffins is they come right out. Uh, the hooks, I did need to do some labeling for the hooks. I have my flipping hooks in this coffin. You know, I've got my five aughts my 4 aughts and my 3 aughts. Here's my EWG hooks, my Gamagatsu hooks. Uh, 2 aught, 3 aught, 4 aught, and 5 aught. Uh, last little terminal coffin I've got here is for uh, some drop shot hooks. Um, I've got some circle hooks and then some wacky rig hooks, some uh, wacky finesse hooks. Easy to get, you know, if I need a, uh, say I need a 2 aught uh, drop shot hook and I want to keep it weedless, well, it's right here. I've got it. You know, this is probably going to do a good job of uh, preventing rust as well, so it's another benefit I think that uh, storing your hooks this way uh, will have. And then you just slide this back in and you're good to go. I've got the front row, just some miscellaneous items. So I've got some weedless drop shot hooks, I've got some weedless wacky hooks here, uh, some shaky head stuff, some trailers, some drop shot weights, some bobber stops, and some punch girts. But again, I'm really excited for this new method for me in 2017 of organizing terminal tackle. Uh, again, I think, I, I think we've all been in the situation where maybe we just got a little lazy and didn't change out a weight or a hook because it wasn't, wasn't convenient to do. This should make it a lot easier, keep your tackle more organized, keep everything safe, uh, prevent chipping, and uh, just be a really good way to, to store your terminal tackle on a kayak. So yeah guys, that's pretty much how I store all my tackle. Um, again, black pack, terminal tackle box. This will go on the kayak with me uh, and everything else is just additional storage. So, you know, like I said, this kind of hit, this is a system that's somewhat evolved over the years and, you know, I think it's pretty efficient. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but I'm pretty satisfied with this here. Let me know if you guys have any, you know, tips or uh, methods of storing tackle and being organized on the water. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys do, but uh, this, for me at least, this method seems to work pretty well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next video.